Welcome, everyone, again to Liberty Talk Radio. I'm your host, Joe Cristiano. We welcome everyone this morning, of this being one of our last, well, it will be our last broadcast of the year. But, it, folks, it's still time for us to take back control of our government. Now, before this bureaucratic, oversized, and self-serving federal government starves us of our property, our freedom, our rights, and our liberty. But to do this, we must shed conventional thinking regarding our political structure. We need to be revolutionaries in thought, dissidents in action. I want to repeat that. We need to be revolutionaries in thought, dissidents in action, only after we recognize what our government is doing to our freedom and our Constitution will we start taking it back. And, folks, this program is just about that. Well, uh, this morning, there is so much to talk about, I decided not to talk about it. Uh, there is, I, I do not want to spend this hour rehashing what most people have been listening to all week. Of course, the two biggies are the fiscal cliff. And if I hear that term one more time, I think I'll boff. And also, uh, gun control, another subject that just grabs me 16 ways from Sunday. But I'd like to maybe reflect a little bit. Maybe we can get on a roll and reflect. I would like for our listeners to give, give me the opportunity to hear you and what you have to say. So if you would call 855-866-1170. Here we are on 1170 KFAQ. Uh, give us a call. It's toll-free, 855-866-1170. We'll call this open mic night. Although this is not the night, this is the morning. We'll call it open mic night. <laughs> open mic no morning. And um, I have had a cold all week, uh, let me admit, and I'm afraid that my voice may go, but I have a couple of backups in the studio with me. So just in the event I go and all of a sudden you hear a different voice, it's, it's not a ghost in your radio. They actually have been appointed to do so, Okay. Uh, folks, this weekend, uh, something really strange happened. Uh, my, my wife and I are driving around in her car, and her car has like nine, uh, three or four engines in it. You know, it's, it's one of those hybrids. It has a uh, gasoline engine, an electric engine. It has a steam engine in the back, and I think uh, solar panels on the roof. I, you know, I don't know. All I know is that w when, when <laughs> I found out how much it cost, you know, it took me about six weeks to get over the shock. You know, because you pay about 50 percent more for that car with all these doodads on it than you do a normal car. But you save two hundred dollars a year in gasoline. Always thought that was a good trade off. You know, well, anyway, we're driving around and all of a sudden the trunk light comes on. Oh, by the way, there's some logic behind this whole thing. There's a story. This, I'm going to tell you a story, but don't go away there. But it's going to tie in somehow. And the, the trunk light goes on. I go. Really? So we stop the car in a parking lot, get out, and we're banging all the doors and trunks and hood and everything. We get back in, trunk, uh, the, the um, uh, door ajar light is still on. So um, it was about 2 one thirty in the afternoon on Saturday. I said, let's run over to the car dealership and see if they're still open and maybe they can adjust it or do something. Well, we go there, and they said, well, we can fit you in, but it may be two or three hours. Sit in our lounge if you can. We have no extra cars to give you right now. So I said, well, we have to. We have to. So we did that. We had two little doggies with us, so we sat there. We had coffee, a couple of um, cookies, and we sat there, and we actually did a crossword puzzle together. We do everything together, my wife and I. It's amazing. Anyway, I love the gal. Anyway, so we're sitting there, and the guy comes out, and he said, well, we found out what the problem was. This is now about 4 o'clock. And he says, we don't have the part, but I can explain to you what needs to be done. He said, your, light, your, your latch, the rear latch of your car, actually has incorporated in the latch a switch to determine whether or not the trunk is uh, ajar. I said, okay. And he said, and you cannot just replace the switch. You have to replace the entire latch. I said, well, okay, a latch is a latch. No big problem. I said, how much? He said $460 plus tax. Now, kid, but folks, I'm not lying. I'm not exaggerating. I'm telling you exactly what it took. 460 dollars $460, <laughs> and of course, they didn't give me the tax. And the tax would be another, it would be $500. And I looked at him, and I laughed. I said, come on. I said, <laughs> I said you know, uh, that's funny. How much is it going to cost? He says $460. And I said, that can't be possible. It's a latch. He said, $460. <laughs> and he said, look, he says, I know where you're going. He said, I don't blame you for reacting the way you're acting. And he was really nice about it, you know. 
He said, what I can do is I can turn the switch off so it doesn't light up and it doesn't burn off your battery and, and all this other stuff. And he said, because it also put on the, tr the, uh, the courtesy light. So he switched it off. And um, they didn't charge me, which I, I thought they were going to charge me $50 for a service thing, but they didn't, which was wonderful. And he said, you let me know. And I think he was saying, you know, you got to be nuts to do this. Now, why am I telling you this? Because, you know, I have nothing better to talk about. No. You know, we talk about debt. But when we talk about debt, we don't include everything. You know, we talk about this fiscal cliff. Screw the fiscal cliff. Let me tell you about debt. Debt is us. We are debt. You know, back in the old days, and I know people hate when I say that, back in the old days, people didn't have debt. When I got out, when I got out of high school, no, in high school, I'm sorry, even in high school, when I had a job at a camera shop. Now, you're not going to believe, I had a job at a camera shop, and they did not pay me. I went there, I wanted to work in this camera shop so badly, I said, could I work here? I'll work for nothing. And they did. And they would give me a few bucks every week, you know, something like that. I have no idea how much I got paid. They didn't know how much I got paid. They gave me a few bucks. Yes, I just, he gave me a few. I love working there. I loved working. I love working in a camera shop. I love cameras. And that's why, could you imagine if the feds walked in and found out what was going on? He would have been closed up in a New York minute. The place would have been boarded up. He would have gotten all sorts of federal pen penalties. He would still, folks, that was 50 years ago. Uh, no, f uh, six, almost 60 years ago, he would still be in jail. I think he'd still be serving time. Me, I don't know what would happen to me. I would have been sent to a boy's home or something like that. Anyway, so, but, but that's, uh, we, at that time, what, we, what I did with my money is I not only spent it on garbage, like so soda stuff and whatever, but also I opened a bank account, a Christmas club account, because I knew at Christmas time I never had enough money to buy presents. So I used to go to the bank, and they used to have a Christmas club where they give you coupons, and then every, every week or every month you, you, you give them so much money. And then at, at Christmas time, you take the money out of the uh, Christmas club account, and I had like maybe 100 bucks at the end of the year, and that was enough money to buy all the presents. No debt. Had no credit cards, no debt. That's the way we used to do things, folks. See, we are in debt now up to our eyeballs, but we don't realize the extent to which we are in debt. Let me explain. I'm going to go back to my car. I know it sounds crazy. Hang on there. Do not turn. Don't touch that dial. Stay with me. Here we are. We talk about uh, educa uh, the um, uh, education debt, you know, uh, uh, college education, you know, th th that debt, which is phenomenal. So it's, it's, it now trumps the um, credit card debt. Then we all have credit cards. Even kids have credit card debt. And some are paying 23.99% interest, you know, on the revolving amount, even when they're not past due. And if you're past due, man, it skyrockets because you get $25, $50 penalties every month, right? And then, of course, the things, we buy crap. What do we do on the weekends? On the weekends when I was a kid, no one went shopping. I mean, weekends were not for shopping. Weekends were for family. We did things together. In the summertime, we all used to jump in the old car, the old Buick, you know, and we used to go to the beach together. My mother used to, you know, cook the lasagna. We used to have lasagna at that Rockaway, you know, Rockaway Beach. But there was no debt. There was never any, no, no one ever talked about debt. No one ever said, geez, I wonder how I'm going to pay this off. If you did have some debt, you may have bought a car, but you had to put down a substantial payment, and they'd only give you, back in those days, maximum two years. In fact, when I was a kid, it was probably one year. So when you were in debt, it was a short period of time. You didn't pay, car went. Very simple. Now, here's my talking point. We have this beautiful car that's got the steam engine, the electric engine, the everything, you know, in it. A, a mechanical everything. Now, I, when I was young, uh, we took cars apart. I used to go to junkyards. I'm not kidding. I used to go to junkyards, and there was a big junkyard right near where the barges came in that took st uh, metal and brought it over overseas, like to Japan, and they used to buy the metal from us. And there were mountains of engines, and I'm not kidding. When I say mountains, I mean mountains, taller than, the, uh, than, than, than an apartment building, of just engines. My, me and my friends, we used to climb on those mountains of engines. I'm not kidding you. And it's dangerous. If one engine would have slipped, you were dead. You were crushed to death. But we didn't think that, you know. All I knew was I needed push rods for my 270 cubic inch Hemi head. 
you know? And I saw one up there because I can tell by the design of the engine where it was. And I used to climb and literally dismantle engines on top of a mountain of engines that were going to be shipped out on a barge, right? Now, this is, this is my background, right? We don't do that today. Today we go out and buy a, a car with nine engines in it for some reason, electrical doodads, where if you don't have a DV, freaking DVD on it, you know, your children will leave you forever and become juvenile and go on drugs and, and life is hell for the rest of your life, you know? And this is our life today. But let me get back to debt. Now remember, back in the old days, there was no debt. I had a Christmas club. I had a net worth. When I was 14 years old, I had a net worth. Believe it or not, it may be probably only about $30, but I had a positive net worth. Today, everybody's in debt, but we don't know how much debt we're in. Let me go back to the car, all right? This wonderful car with the steam engine in it, all right? Um, we think we have credit card debt, right? We said credit card debt. You know, we have school debt, you know, school loan debt. You know, uh, we may have uh, our mortgage, for example, you know? But then, you know, when we think mortgage, we don't think, well, I'm paying off my mortgage. You're never paying off your mortgage. Don't kid yourself. The government will always own your house because when you finish paying off your mortgage and then all you do is get a tax bill every year, that, that, that's when the cardiac arrest comes in. And you realize that, you mean I've been paying $3,000 a year for this freaking house just in, in, in property taxes? I have no kids in school and it goes to a school that doesn't teach my kids squat? I said, yeah, that's right. That, that's, our, that's our life today. So you have that debt. You continue this debt for the rest of your life. You're indebted. You're, you're an indentured servant at best, right? Now, we add all the things. We say, well, we got this much debt every year. We need to make so much. Aha. Contraire Pierre. Let me tell you where you're off. And this is where I want everyone to listen. Today, you go out and buy the, 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 the car, the one you see on television with the sexy girl on there, you know, with the, you know, you name it. She's got it all. I tell you, you know, the, the, what I call the, the lust model, you know, they put that one in the car. She's always in the car. They never, you know, she never comes riding with me. My wife won't let me anyway. That's another story, you know. So you got this girl in this car, you know, you're lusting at this car, lusting at the girl, lusting at everything, you know. And, of course, everyone's thin. Everyone's happy. Everyone's dressed beautifully. Everyone's happy. Everyone, and everyone Everyone smile. They all have beautiful, beautiful teeth. Never have to go to the dentist. Life is perfect. Absolutely freaking perfect, right? And then you find out that if you buy the car, you start figuring out how much money you got to make payments every month. And all of a sudden you become a slave to the, the GMAC or whatever. You know, you so see you're making payments every month. But that's not your debt. You know what you're leaving out? You're leaving out the fact that when that car stops, when a light goes on in that car, you're going to be indebted to $600 or $500. You see how we buy debt? It's an unfunded liability. Thank you. Someone just gave me, gave me a cue card for nothing. It's an unfunded liability. In other words, you are sitting, when you buy one of these new stupid cars, you know, they call them smart cars. They're, st you know, they're smart cars for stupid people, you know. What happens is you're buying an unfunded debt. And you never know. You can drive around, and you better make sure. You better pray that that stupid light doesn't go on that tells you your, your gas cap is off or your emissions is not perfectly balanced or whatever. Because if that light goes on, if you had a budget, you are finished. And you see, when we buy things today, we are putting ourselves in debt. Because not only do we have to buy things that we really don't need, but we can't fix. We can't tinker with. What when we bought a car? We bought an old car. You know, if it didn't, work, I mean, it, these cars stopped. These were old cars. You know, we got out. We pulled everything apart. Put everything back in somehow. You know, we kicked it and all that. It started again. Could you imagine taking one of these uh, multi-engine cars that they sell today, so you can save five miles on a gallon? You know, and the thing stops. Could someone tell me where would you start? You know, we, we have a call on the air. I'm sure he has something better to say than I do. You know, uh, he wants to talk about our debt. It's Lloyd. Lloyd, this is uh, Liberty Talk Radio, 1170 KFAQ. Thank you very much for calling in. What's on your mind? Well, Joe, since you started on the issue of debt, I thought I'd make your day a little bit happier in the fact that it's not, I mean, it's even worse than what you think. You, you know what maritime apothecation is, don't you? I have, I have no idea. I can't even say it. Just forget about spelling it. Just what is well, uh, hypothecation, uh, our money is a debt-based currency, and so even though you think you've paid something off with your money, since your money is a 
debt note that this, uh, the Treasurer of the United States owes to the Federal Reserve, you do not have free and clear money. And this means that the creditor, which is the Federal Reserve, has a right over the thing that belongs uh, to whatever you've purchased. They still have a technically a power to cause it to be sold in order to pay the claim on, you know, on the note. So even though you think you have your house free and clear, your car free and clear, through uh, the technical uh, law term of hypothecation, they could, until you pay off the full debt, which means all the money has to come back to the Fed, and there's not enough money to go back to the Fed to fully pay off a thing, they can technically, uh, the way I understand it, they still own your stuff and could sell it in order to clear the debt that the Treasurer of the United States owes to the Federal Reserve. Lloyd, I hate to tell you this, but you make sense. <laughs> you do. You make sense. You're absolutely correct. Yeah. You know, uh, are you telling me that I'm going to be the indentured servant until the day I die and then and then some? Well, I'm telling you that something's going to have to die. It's either you or the Federal Reserve. Well, I'm not Amen. dying. I'm staying here. I'll tell you that. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Lloyd, thank you so much for calling in. That's that's great explanation. Would you send me an uh, email to comments, plural, comments at libertytalkradio.com. You this morning deserve a Liberty Talk Radio t-shirt. I'll make sure one gets out to you right away. Don't forget to tell me your t-shirt size, okay? All right. All right. Thank you for listening in. Appreciate it. Excellent point. Excellent point. You know, um, back, you say, well, Joe, wh- how was it in your days? Well, in my days, well, we can talk a little bit about money because money is my favorite subject. You know why? Because I don't have any. You know, you always, you always talk about something you don't have. But, you know, money is interesting because at one time, money represented wealth. Think about that. It represented wealth. When, when a person labored, and I say labored, it doesn't have to be with a, a shovel. It could be an accountant. When you, when, you, when you provided your services to somebody else, someone paid you in kind. In other words, they said, you know, you, you worked all day, and that was, we agreed that your efforts were worth, you know, an, an X number of dollars. And then that per- person paid you in an instrument that represented that amount of money. Let's say they paid you in coins that were made out of copper. Well, they would pay you the equivalent amount of copper in those coins relative to the amount that they owed you. And that's what, so, and no one wasn't, nobody was in debt, folks. Understand? Nobody was in debt. But Lloyd was absolutely correct because they took that away. Now we're borrowing the money. It is a note that's due, and that's money that I don't have. That's money that's owed. I'm getting paid with money that is owed to the Federal Reserve. Now, let's take a break. We're we're late. Let's take a break. Hi, folks. We're back. This is Liberty Talk Radio. I'm your host, Joe Cristiano, on 1170 KFAQ. We invite you to call 855-866-1170. That's 855-866-1170. Your comments, please, to comments, plural, please, comments at libertytalkradio.com. Let me hear from you. I, my voice is starting to go. I'm going to need your help. Please be merciful. Call in. You know, Jack Benny uh, had, there was a classic line. Uh, it, it, it's probably his most famous line. A guy comes up to him, you know, crook, <laughs> and says with a gun, and says, your money or your life. And Jack Benny just stays there and then puts his hand to his face as he used to his classic look. And he looks at the guy and he hesitates. And the guy says, I said your money or your life. And he says, I'm thinking. <laughs> and it's a great line. It's beautifully executed. It's, it, it goes down in the annals of, of, of great comedy. But, you know, um, there was some truth in that. It was your money or your life. Well, today, um, sorry, folks, your money and your life are on the same, uh, same uh, uh, platform. You see, your money is not money anymore. Your money is money that you owe. So when they take your life, they take your money. And that's the same thing. That joke is no longer pertinent today. I know this is very difficult for people to understand. You know, our currency was devalued. Everyone knows that we went off the gold standard. Uh, I mean, people weren't allowed to um, own gold back in 1934 with Roosevelt. You know, he's such a wonderful person. And, he, and he, then he 
Then he devalued the dollar immediately. People lost 71% of their purchasing power overnight. Wonderful, wonderful freaking person he was, you know. And then Nixon, another gem, you know, La Programma Gem, as my grandmother used to say, you know. And, and here he is. You know, he takes us off the gold standard altogether just because France said, hey, you know, you guys got involved in the Vietnamese War. You know, you know you're not going to be able to pay the debt. We want our gold that's in Fort Knox. Give, me, give us our gold back. And they say, sorry, we just went off the gold standard. We screw people really royally, you know. But they screw the people too because it's not, not backed by anything. You are getting paid with debt and not something. Like, do you know there's only one, one coin in the world one coin in the world, folks, that is still worth its value, its, 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 uh, its value, its uh, 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 denominated value. One coin in the world. And I bet you many people don't know what that is. You want to know? You want to know, don't you? Look it up. The American nickel. The nickel back was, uh, was minted first in 1866. It was called the shield. Five grams of weight, 75% copper, 25% nickel. Since that time, the dollar has depreciated, since 1866, has depreciated over 100 times, folks. Listen, not 100, 100%. 100% when it was worth $20, now it's worth $10, right? That's 100%. 100 times. 100%. Since 1866, but yet we still mint the nickel the same way. Five grams in weight, 75% copper, 25% nickel. So there are people whose wealth is centered around collecting nickels. Think about it. Think about it. It's worth more than the, than the denominated value. Worth more. In fact, to mint a nickel costs almost 10 cents today. So when you buy a nickel, in fact, you're, you're, you're increasing your net worth. In case of deflation, it's still worth five cents. You still have five cents, right? You can't lose there. In case of inflation, hyperinflation, what happens to the cost of, uh, uh, the cost of sil uh, copper and nickel? Skyrockets. It goes up with inflation. You can't lose. In fact, I know of an um, investment, big investment guru that bought $1 million worth of nickels and put them in a warehouse. That's his investment. Smartest investment he ever made. But you see, back then, when people were paid, people were paid with something of value. So when you did something, you received something of value. Now you receive debt. So when you say you have a net worth, I, 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 I'd like to contest that. Because you may, you may own a house, but with that house, you also buy debt. What happens when your roof goes? What happened? Five years ago, my foundation cracked because the ground was so dry. I had to bring a guy in with the, you know, the p pilings and stuff. Cost seven thousand dollars, and it's still cracked. We continually put ourselves in debt, but what we don't consider when we consider our net worth, what our unfunded liabilities are. In other words, those things that are going to occur, naturally things that are going to occur eventually, that we're going to have to pay for. So those people who say, "Oh, you know, I would never rent. I would own a house because oh, it's a good investment." You're out of your mind. What you will pay in keeping that house updated and whatever, you know, will trump anything that you ever make in the house itself. Now, it's rare that people buy houses. They buy for, you know, 200000 and a, a year later they sell for four hundred. Oh, yeah, those. forget about those people. Those people flip homes. I'm saying if you buy a house and hold it, you know, you're going to be. And let me ask you another question. When you own a house, for example, uh, who does the lawn every week? You've got to do it. This is work. This is work that you have to perform. You're not getting paid. You are, you are working and not getting paid. And what are you doing? You're polluting the air, right? You're be begging uh, 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 grass, right? right? And you got to listen to your wife complain that, you know, it wasn't cut right. Think about that. Just think about that. Think about the debt. We are, unfortunately, we are closing out the year... 2012, more in debt than we ever have been, just by virtue of the fact of the things that we buy. Look at your cell phone and all this other stuff. They go wacky. You go to the store, it costs a fortune to fix. You got to replace. In fact, most stuff can't even be fixed today. I remember my grandfather, my, my, my father-in-law, my father, 
they all had little tool places, you know, down in the basement. Something broke, went down there, somehow it came back, it was fixed. Today you can't do that. Everything you buy puts you in debt. It, it makes you a slave to this, indentures you to the system. And you have to get out of that. We have to think about that. Is this time for our break? All right, we're going we're gonna to take a break, folks. Stay with us. We'll be back. Folks, we're back. This is Liberty Talk Radio. I'm your host, Joe Cristiano, here on 1170 KFAQ, 855-866-1170. This is the last uh, segment of our program, the last 20 minutes. We do invite you to call 855-866-1170. This program is for you. If I sound like I'm ranting and I'm going to bite your head off, don't worry about it. I will not do that. I never have, and uh, I reckon <laughs> to prove it. Please call in. I'd like to hear what's on your mind, 855-866-1170. You know, what I, what I find particularly disturbing, looking at this at year end, is, you know, where, where do we, you know, what happened this year? Well, you know, what happened this year is what happens every year. Uh, things just don't seem to get much better. In fact, they, they just seem to get worse. And we're just convinced that, well, you know, maybe this, maybe that. And we become uh, 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 almost attuned to the way things are, and we make that the new normal. Every year becomes the new normal to the point where I really believe, I, folks, I mean that, that, that the government will put you in chains and you will say, thank you very much for the nice chains that you gave me. I mean, we will get to that point. You know, when I was young, we, we, what we learned in school was the, the, the fables, like the three little pigs, you know, Rapunzel and all that. You know, each one of those stories, they were really, they, they weren't kid stories. They were telling you something. You know, preparing, you know, don't getting into to debt. Watch out for the wicked king and all the queen and stuff like that. All of them. And, you know, the, the, I, I read the, finally read the book a couple of years ago, Everything You Need to Know You Learned in Kindergarten. I think that's, that's the title of it or something like that. And it, it was so true. You know, if, if we went to, well, everyone went to kindergarten and really absorbed what was going on, we wouldn't have to go to school after that. After that, we would take care of ourselves. And it sounds crazy. I know it sounds super crazy, but that's true. Uh, let's see what Monty has to say. Monty, you're on Liberty Talk Radio, 1170 KFAQ. Thank you for calling in. What's on your mind? Uh, Joe, it's just an honor to be on with you this morning. Uh, the, the debt problem in, in this country is just, uh, what you've been talking about is just just astounding. I. I think the only viable candidate running this time was really Ron Paul when you consider the situation. I agree. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, uh, yeah. The, the history of these people, it, it goes back to the Rothschild family. They took over the bank in England and about five other nations. They set up central banks in England and uh, Germany and France and Italy. Um, early on in the, I guess, the 17th century, you know. And they, they, their thing was to engineer wars to create uh, more money for them. They'd, they'd start, you know, get the two nations or more involved in a war, and everybody's in debt to them after that war because they, they put out loans to those people. And uh, why don't we get it? Just, just look at the. Um, situation we're now in, you know, I'm in the yeah. world, uh, you know, this whole Muslim Brotherhood thing. A absolutely. You know, Monty, I think if the American public ever turned off their stupid television sets, stopped watching uh, yes, these uh, yes. stupid, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, 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 um, reality. reality shows, you know, I, I'm unbelievable. Every I turn the TV on, I, I watch it for two minutes to see what's going on. I said, I can't believe people stare at this stupid stuff. <laughs> and if they did that, and they just picked up a book on the Rothschilds, you know, some book, there's several books on the Rothschilds, on the banking system. I mean, there would be a revolution in America if people would only sit down and read and see what is going on. And if you ever mention to anyone that, you know, we don't own our currency. In fact, the Federal Reserve is not even part of the government. It's actually owned partially by the Rothschilds. People look at you like you have just lost your mind. Yeah, yeah. And just mentioning the name Rothschild, a lot of people, uh, they'll, they'll call you anti-Semitic because, you know, that family comes from Jewish background. But right. it's, it's not about uh, any 
particular national background. It's about, uh, you know, what, what they've done to the world. They've, they've set up uh, central banks in country after country, and, um, well, just look, look what happened to England. They, they once were, uh, you know, the, the sun never set on the British Isles. They once were a tremendous empire, and they just... Uh, basically destroyed them economically, you know. Right, and, 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 the, the, and the pound sterling used to be, you know, used to be the, uh, the uh, uh, currency, the world's reserve currency, and, and it was, in fact, backed by precious metals. And, and then that, that went by the wayside. Monty, thanks a lot. we got to move on. I want to thank you so much for calling in. Send me a, uh, an email with your mailing address and a T-shirt side to comments at libertytalkradio.com. Love to send you a T-shirt so you can be one of the um, boards of walking billboards for Liberty Talk Radio. Thank you, Joe. Okay, thank you, Monty. Take care. Okay, uh, folks, we're back. You're, you're listening to Liberty Talk Radio. I'm your host, Joe Cristiano, on 1170 KFAQ. We just had a glitch, but I hope our glitches are gone, and you're with us back again. I hope you did not hang up. Okay, we are now? We're, we're Okay. Okay. All righty. All right. We'll, we'll try to start this again. You know, um, I forgot where I was. I totally, lo- totally lost my, <laughs> you know. Oh, you know, uh, I want to talk about this, uh, this, the, the shooting <coughs> in, in, in Newtown, Connecticut. I, I'm not going to rehash it. I'm not going to rehash all the stuff. I mean, it's, it, if anyone could think, they would know there's something amiss. What really bothers me about this whole shooting, and, and you have this, this kid that's really ill, you know, mentally in the whole bit, and all of a sudden, one day he decides to get up and decides to kill his mother, and he kills everybody. You know, folks, you know, that makes as much sense to me as, 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 as the, the logic that our government gave us on 9-11, on what happened on 9-11. I mean, it all, I mean, it is, it stinks from the head down. The whole story stinks, you know? And and what do we do? That's all we talk about is gun control now. My point being is I don't know what happened. I'm not going to go through conspiracy theories and what this kid did and mind control. But all I'm saying is that we advertise, we promote this stuff time and time again. And because we are affixed to the TV set listening to this stuff, we are, in fact, being indoctrinated. You know, it's we see old movies of the uh, little kids Kids in schools uh, in Ch- in China of uh, 75 years ago, where they would uh, say, you know, we hate America. We have all this other stuff, you know, hate talk and whatever. And we say, boy, that's mind control. We don't do that here in America, you know. We don't we don't do that. We're free countries, folks. We do it, and the way we do it is sort of a little surreptitiously, you know, through the media. Uh, we have the government who owns the. Uh, 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 media outlets, you know, who advertise, etc. And we stare, we are convinced that we should be staring at this TV screen. And in this TV screen, we are slowly but surely told how to think. We are told exactly how to think. We are because it's all, this is mind control. I mean, it's not blatant. You know, you listen to the news. You only get one side of the story and a story that we probably shouldn't be talking about. But this is what we get. 24 hours a day. I mean, this is my, this is no different than the kids sitting in a classroom, you know, uh, uh, chanting, you know, anti-Japanese or anti-American uh, uh, slogans. There's no difference. But we think it's different because we're free. Well, if we're so free, why can't we turn off the TV? We can't. We're addicted. We're addicted to TV, and we listen to everything that's said. And then when someone mentions something that's contrary to what they hear on TV, what do they do? They object to it. You know, they go banana. Go, oh, no, you got to be nuts. you got to be crazy. Look what happened. Someone mentioned Ron Paul earlier, another caller. Right? What he did is he spoke the truth. And everyone said, what? Oh, he's a nut. You see? We're, we're gone. It's, it's over. Our minds have been turned to mush. We only believe what we hear on television from the mainstream media and from our politicians. Let me, let me give you a good example, one that just grabs the hell out of me is that when uh, Obama said that um, uh, let's, of course, not only referring to the situation in in Newtown, let's stop the cycle of violence. Let's stop the cycle of violence. Now, let me see if I get this right. This, This guy wants to stop the cycle of violence, all right? 
But when he leaves the White House, he's got dozens of people, you know, with automatic machine guns, you know, you know, visible, by the way, you know, guarding him when he leaves. What does that tell you? That tells you this, we're all nuts. We all want to kill him, right? He needs protection. But when I leave my house, I can't have a gun. And in most states, you can't have a gun. Just think of that. And then we believe him. We look at toward this person as our leader. We can't see that. We can't see the, the, the mockery in that. But what really gets to me is that he says we must stop the cycle of violence. However, here in the United States, overseas, we really should kill everybody we can. You know, because killing people overseas, it's okay. We, we're cleansing the world of bad people. So what we're going to do is take your children, teach them how to kill. Nice kids. We're going to put them in boot camp, teach them how to kill. Send them overseas to kill people that we tell them to kill, although we're not at war with them. And then he says, we should stop the cycle of violence. Let's take our caller. Randy, you're on the air. Thank you for calling Liberty Talk Radio on 1170 KFAQ. What's on your mind? Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Joe. A couple of things. One is that you know, I'm kind of getting a little tired of people exonerating Ron Paul for his role in this election. Had he, and I agree with much of what he said, but had he come out realizing that Obama was was the political antichrist for, for the United States. Right. right. Uh, you know, had he come out and enthusiastically endorsed Romney and encouraged his supporters to get out and vote, we wouldn't have had less of a turnout than we had in 2008, and we wouldn't have Obama in the White House. So he bears a lot of responsibility for that. And the second issue, and I may lose here, I'm going through sort of a dead zone a bit. The second issue is regarding violence in America. You know, the uh, the murder rate is at an all-time 50-year low right now. Right, that's correct. It has never been this low since the 1960s. And the interesting thing about all of this is that if you take away the black-on-black -black, uh, murder rate, it's phenomenally lower. And, you know, for people to try and blame this on guns, a lot of advocacy positions have pointed out that the presence of guns in the hands of law-abiding citizens is one of the reasons that the violent crime rate and the murder rate is substantially lower. You, you are correct on that one, too. I, I agree. You know, uh, uh, Randy, uh, uh, what people don't, don't realize is that um, what we hear is always one side of the story from the, the mainstream media via the, uh, the, the government, and that is um, so-and-so was killed. How often do you hear uh, someone say, hey, uh, Mrs. Mausner in... Belusky, Mississippi, you know, was uh, nearly accosted by two men. She took out her, her, her 38 special and plugged one of them in the leg, and they both ran, and it saved her life, you know, and we applaud her. How often do you hear that? publications, you never hear it. They have, yeah. you they never, have no, a regular you're, you're, feature you're series right. in yeah. all of their publications. Yeah, yeah. I want I want to comment. Yeah, I want to comment a little about that thing with Ron Paul. What you say has an element of truth. I, I cannot deny that because if he would have rallied troops and said, hey, guys, listen, I want you to do this. The, the problem that Ron Paul had is that Romney was really no better, not much better than, um, uh, uh, than Obama because he voted in all those acts that were, I mean, he, he approved of all those acts that, um, that, that, that the government put through under Obama and even Bush. So he would have to have given up all of his principles to do that. And, and that would have been a tough thing. I don't think I could have done that. But I understand what you're saying. We should have gotten everybody on there. Let's go for a break real quick. Hold on. <laughs> Folks, you're listening to Liberty Talk Radio. I'm your host, Joe Cristiano on 1170 KFAQ. Uh, we have, this is going to be my last minute wrap up. Uh, you know, there's so much that could be said, should be said, and, of course, we can't tackle it all, and we can't even, even broach the subject. But let me, let me throw a few things out. Please beware of surface logic by our government. For example, when they say, well, you know, this is a post-9-11 world. Ask those clowns, what the hell do you mean by that? It's something that they, I know they were complicit with. 
I can, I can prove that myself to, to, to you if I had time. But they, they, they were complaining. And yet they use that as an excuse for everything, including the war on terror and everything else. When the government says it's a post-9-11, watch out. When they say anything, be careful. You know, when it comes to uh, feeling that you're financially safe, you know, really look at what you have. Find out if you're really buying an asset or a liability. It can save you. You know, if you want to be safe, take in things of value. I always tell people, well, I can't afford to buy bricks of gold. Who do you think I am? I say, fine, then buy toilet paper. But think, I want everyone to think. And this is, oh, we're about, we're about to, through. All right, thank you very much for listening to Liberty Talk Radio. This is the end of today's broadcast. We'd like to thank our sponsors for their financial support. And we'd like to thank you for listening in. And You've we're going to go right now to First Radio Watch on 68th and Memorial and get a bite to eat if you want to join us. All right, thank you very much for listening in. Induced by mass media news programming. No BS here, just the facts.